the Liz Podcasts. A lot has happened since last time to you guys, you know, and I thought I'd sit down. I've just made a cup of tea, uh, a nice pot of tea, in fact, and I thought, you know what, let's just sit down and have a chat. Here's my tea. Delicious. Yeah, so I wanted to do a podcast like once a week, and I know I'm a couple of weeks late, and the reason for that is because stuff just hit the fan, you know? I mean, everything has started to happen so quickly, but I think now's a good time just to talk about it all. So me and Edward, you know that we wanted to get a boat, and um, we were talking about it and looking and stuff, and we weren't actually going to buy one until March. You know, Edward was really enjoying his time on the land, but for me, I'd I'd already checked out. Uh, it got to a point that... Um, I was no longer interested to, to talk to people and make new friends. And I'm a very, very social creature, but for some reason I just, I didn't want to talk to anyone, I didn't want to do anything outside, I just wanted to stay inside and work. I just wanted to work as hard as I could, do all the research I could. I just became consumed. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's, I think it's very important to keep a balance, but for me, that was the only thing that mattered, the the boat project and my own work and completing the Della story and... You know, there was no other room for that. But when I first moved to France, I was so determined to make a life for myself here to make friends and go out and have a really good social circle. And I met people and they were really, really nice. And then they would ask me to hang out and I'd find myself as I made this decision with Edward that, yeah, we're going to buy a boat. I became less and less interested in building a life here. You know, I'm I'm going to say bye. I'm going to be going in a matter of months. So lo and behold, I'm talking on um, one of the Facebook groups. I think the Facebook group I was talking um, to was a boat. Uh, was um, a page called Champagne Boating on a Beer Budget, uh, and apparently it's based on a famous book. And I don't know what the book is, but I'm going to have to read it. I think. Uh, and I started talking to these people, and there were these really incredible boats that just need a bit of TLC. So like our budget. We don't have a massive budget to buy a boat that was saleable. We had a budget to buy a boat and then a monthly income to fix her up. And that was what we were going to do. And uh, there was all these boats there in the Caribbean and the States and stuff. And I was like, oh, crap. So to, to be able to get a boat that we want, the size that we want, to be to afford it, it's going to have to be in the Caribbean. We were looking in, in France for a long time. And I was so um, convinced that I could get one in France, but... It it just they were so expensive and the the most that we the best that we could ever hope for in France was like a twenty nine foot, and I think it came to a point where I found a twenty nine footer and I'd convinced myself that it would be okay and I went to Edward and I was like oh you know this this could be good and he just looked at me and he was like uh, Lisbeth uh, you you know uh, it is not possible you know it's not possible so I was like ah crap. It, we can't do that, can we? Like, not if we want a crew of four. Not if we want to live on it long term. So then we were like, look, oh, well, the UK is cheaper. Maybe we should just go over to the UK and have a look. So me and Edward planned this three-week, four-week uh, road trip around Britain. And we were going to go all around Britain. I was going to show Edward all the places that I love that meant so much to me. And we would find a boat on the way. And then I just started talking on this forum and I started doing more and more research and I thought, okay, well, we're, we're aiming to head to the Caribbean anyway. And Edward really wants to go around the Caribbean and the islands. We want to go to the French islands. There's all the blacks. That's the place that we want to really head to. So wouldn't it make sense to get a boat in the Caribbean? So I've been looking at these boats for a long time anyway. And then one day I was talking, I put up a post, and this girl forwarded me this boat, and she was like, ha ha, you might recognise this boat, it's in the mail, I thought she'd be good for you. And whether or not this lady was serious in sending it to me, I don't know, but I clicked on it, and I was like, boom, this is it. This is it. She was um, a 1969 Amel Euros, and just the fact that I could find an Amel just blew me away and she was uh she'd been demastered she a mass was broken and and uh, she needed a bit of tlc every the hull was fine all that and she was in the british virgin islands and she was going on sale for eight thousand dollars 
I showed Edward and he was like, oh, she is very nice, uh, she is very good. And the, I think, lot, I had a lot of emails when I was talking about it from people saying, um, why are you going for an email? There's so many other boats that are better than Amel. And, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but that, I'm not buying an Amel because I think it's the best brand. I'm buying an Amel for a range of reasons. One, because... Okay, it's a French brand. I seem to really like the French brands, the Defers, the Benetos, and the Amels. I don't know why, but they're my favorite brands. Two, because of, of course, because of Delos, you know? I mean, I, I recognize things. I know where things go. I, 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 I have a familiarity. And three, it was kind of like a testament to Brian, you know? it's He has such deep love for the, for the Amels and... That was, I felt like it was a brand that I could trust. And I really respected the story of, of the guy, uh, Amel, um, the, the French um, boat builder. So I, that's why I chose it. And because she needed some love and I, I really connected to this boat. So time went on and I decided to put in a 60% um, offer of the boat. And then I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to get her. I'm not going to get her. I've offered 60%. I'm not, I'm not going to get her. And I was very, very stressed out. Um, I think because I knew I wasn't going to get her, I started feeling very, very sad. And Ed was like, you know, it's too soon to get a boat now. Maybe we should wait till March. Maybe we should just wait and get things sorted. You've got a lot on your plate right now. You're doing a lot of work. Maybe March is the best time that we can do it together because I'm busy with my work and blah, blah, blah. So then I was like, okay, well, the best, the smartest thing to do then is to lose this offer. And then the day before, the day came where the final offers were going to come through. And I was still hoping for a chance. And the guy sent an email through and said, okay, um, 71 people have put offers through. And I was like, 71? 71, there's no way I'm, I'm going to get her. You know, I'd offered, what, 4,800, something like that. So I went out with uh, <coughs> my friends and all I could, I mean, I didn't even want to go out. Edward, I got this invitation to go out and Ed was like, Elizabeth, you really should try and talk with people. So I was like, yeah, fine, I'll go outside and I did, and I just ended up talking about the boat consistently. And I realised more and more that the idea of losing this boat, I, I just felt so emotional about it. I thought, I just, I just can't, I can't lose her. And, yeah, so I, I decided to offer the full amount. The full amount and the condition that the hull was sound and the condition that I could pay the full amount at the end of February. So the the next morning came and I didn't hear anything the day after. I waited the weekend and then I woke up on the Monday and Edward was going to work and I said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, we we hear back today. And he was like, oh, yes, well, no, you text me uh, if you hear anything. And we, I don't know why, I just didn't expect. I didn't think I was going to get accepted. And the hours passed and then... I just got an email and I quickly opened it and it just said, uh, your offer has won. Here are the enclosed documents for your ML euros. And I was like, holy shit. What? 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 The? What? And I was like, oh my God, my offer's been accepted. And then all of a sudden this wave of emotion just crashed down at me. And I, I'm still speechless. I still don't understand how this has happened and the fact that I am now the owner of Namel Euros. And you know what I did? I just made like a pot of tea. I instantly ran to the kitchen, opened a bottle of rum and called Lisa immediately. And there we proceeded to talk for two hours on the phone and I just got smashed on rum. I was absolutely sozzled. And then I ended up telling the, uh, Edward, who didn't really believe me, I called my... Um, closest uh, friends and family and told them and then of course it was I um, put it on Instagram on an Instagram live feed where I was absolutely sozzled and um, yeah I was crying and laughing and 
all sorts. It was, and the days that passed, I mean, sorry, I'm skipping forward, but um, that night after the, when we heard about it, Edward came back and I just started crying. We opened a bottle of champagne, sat on the floor, and then we realised our lives were going to change forever. And I feel like, um, you know, it's, I've changed our lives so I feel responsible because Edward does have a nice life here in France. He's been away for six years travelling and then I come along and I'm like, hey, do you want to buy a boat in the Caribbean? So I feel like I'm, I've been a bit selfish, but I know this is his dream. He's a sailor. He's always wanted to do this, but I can't help just feeling a bit, a bit bad for him. However, I mean, who can complain that their girlfriend's just bought them a yacht in the Caribbean? Come on. But the details of the boat, she has a broken mast and broken rigging. I mean, I'm taking that the rigging needs replaced because, you know, the mast. So we're researching hard for that. We've put the deposit 3,000 down. We're working very hard for the remainder of 5,000. Um, so, yeah, we head over to the British Virgin Islands uh, in April, the end of April, May, uh, Edward's dad's 60th birthday is like May 9th. So I think it would be very special if we were around for that for him. But it's a really incredible time and I'm so stoked and I can't believe that this has actually happened. You know, I was just this little English girl before Delos and I would look at um, boat listings thinking, oh yeah, I'll just buy a boat. But of course, I would look at them and I knew I'd never buy them because I never had the courage to do that. And then, of course, I ended up on Delos and learned what I did. And I was the worst sailor on that boat. I was the worst sailor. And, and then here I am, with the love of my life, living in the south of France, and I've just bought my own boat. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to relearn sailing. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to be a, a mini mechanic and learn how to fix my own boat and how to take care of my first home. This is my first home. Jesus Christ, I've just bought my first home. It's just hit, it's hitting, it's hitting me now. But I'm incredibly happy. And I feel like I'm becoming, I'm becoming the person I always wanted to be. And I can see that person on the horizon who is capable and responsible for her own boat. And that's what I want to be. I want to be a capable and responsible boat owner. I want to be a good sailor, most of all. I want to be a good sailor. And I want to make Brian proud. I want him to be able to look at me and have respect for me that, yeah, Elizabeth's a, a good sailor. They're, they're like, yeah, Elizabeth can make a really good cup of tea. <laughs> I want to be, I want to earn his, I'm no, I know he respects me, I know he loves me, but I want to earn his respect as a sailor. I know I've got a long way to go, but I'm going to put all my heart and soul into it. And um, Delos landed yesterday and I got to tell them and they were so happy and they were so blown away. And Brian sent me a really beautiful email and I'm just so grateful and so thankful for all of the support that everyone's given me. Um, it's so blown me away with Pedro and the donations and everything. Um, but I promise you that this journey will not just be about getting pissed and having fun. I mean, of course, there will be plenty of rum, but this, this journey will be about something bigger. I have a lot of passions and a lot of drive to help others and help the environment, so I really want it to mean something. But um, I wanted to share with you guys the ins and outs of that moment. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just working my ass off, trying to research stuff in the, the British Virgin Islands, new masts, rigging, all that stuff. I'm trying to learn it all. So I hope you will join me on this journey as I discover what it's going to be like to own my own boat. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I own an Amel. I have my own Amel. And do you know what her name is? Papagino. SV Papa. So uh, I'm, I pretty love that. I was thinking about changing the name, but I think I'm not, I'm not doing that. Papagino. Wow. I own a boat. Woo! Love you all, guys. Thank you so much for your support. And have a very B-E-A-utiful weekend. Ta-ra.